So, welcome back to another video of uh, A Year in a Kilt. Um, this is, I'm going to be doing an uh, unboxing of a couple kilts. I think there's two in there anyway that I ordered from USA Kilts back in end of December that just recently came in. Um, if you just finished watching my week three, three and four combined video, you'll notice I'm dressed exactly the same. That's because I literally just finished recording it and I moved on to video number two. Um, yeah, uh, before we get into the unboxing, uh, you may or may not be able to see, got some gosh off to the side here, so this is uh, Arbor Lore 12. I'm actually quite confused as to uh, where this is from in Scotland, as at least uh, what uh, area of Scotland, because it says it's a Highland single malt, but it also says it's a Speyside, so it's uh, it's confusing and I need to do some more research in there. Um, it is, however, very nice scotch. Reasonably, reasonably uh, priced. Not my favorite scotch, but uh, one of many that I will, will enjoy or have been enjoying since the first time I've had it. Um, I'm always amazed with scotch at how you get such a wide variety of flavors with such a limited number of ingredients. It's uh, very much like German beer in that regard. Anyway, enough of that. On to the stuff that you're actually interested in. Uh, so this is a true unboxing. Haven't even opened this yet. It, uh, I was expecting one, but I think there's two in there. I'm going to pull my mouse table back just a little bit. So this will be the, uh, the third and fourth kilts that I've ordered from USA Kilts. I actually should have grabbed a pair of scissors. Let me uh, grab those briefly. Ha! That way I can take the baseline stitch out, which is the reason I was going to do this in the first place. So if we pop this open. Now, these are their. Uh, Five yard polyviscose casual kilts. I have one that I've worn. Have I worn it previously? I don't think I have. I don't remember. Uh, but I have a Gordon uh, five yard casual kilt from them that I have worn previously. Uh, wow, there's a lot of stuff in there. Let's uh, drop that down so you can see. So I did order. Yeah, they're both here. Uh, I did order kilt hanger with each of them as well. So I've got two kilt hangers. I think they're in the 10 to 15 dollar range. Not bad. Um, awesome, awesome made kilt hangers. Uh, they've got uh, four clips on them. Most have two. Uh, they're really sturdy. They're definitely worth the money uh, if you have a, a wide range of kilts, uh, especially the heavier gauge like the one I'm wearing. Uh, these are fantastic. We got some candies, a couple business cards. What, sir? Yes, they did bring, make two. Awesome. So the first one we're going to pull out. More paper. It's just a, uh, ah, yeah. Just a listing of what's in here. We have our Douglas Modern. Oh, the basting stitch is actually not in there. I swear I had to cut some up the last time. Weird. Uh, so there's the uh, Douglas Modern. Five-yard polyviscose casual kilt from USA Kilts. And... Yeah, no basting stitches. Weird. I swear I had to cut them out of the last one I ordered from them. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I mis misremember. Uh, this is the Hunting Stewart. Uh, so I've uh, almost completed my collection of Stewart kilts, at least for the uh, the three tartans that I would like. Uh, I do want a uh, Stewart old uh, Stewart old old Stewart in the modern 
palette color, which if you're watching this, well, you will be watching this on YouTube, it is, is nowhere else. If you look at the banner image uh, above, that's the Stuart Old Tartan on my banner. Um, definitely, uh, I've gravitated towards that a lot. That's one of my favorite Stuart Tartans, and I do not have a kilt in it yet. Because you can only get it in a, a higher quality, uh, more expensive kilt. So, at some point that'll probably be happening, but uh, not in the immediate future. Um, so, USA kilts, casual kilts, pretty solid. Uh, unlike most, well, unlike any other casual kilts I have, and unlike most kilts you'll find, you'll notice they, uh, they no buckles. Whereas, you know, this has, oh, you can kind of see the buckles there, they're under everything. Um, they do Velcro across the front. It's pretty solid, sturdy Velcro. And that allows you to, uh, allows them to save a little bit on the material. It makes it a little more uh, flexible, uh, versatile, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, so you can get different waist measurements out of uh, the same sort of stuff fairly easily without having to move the buckles around very much. And uh, as these are machine washable, they're, uh, you don't have to worry about the, the buckles, the leather and the buckles wearing out over time in, in the machine if you do wash them. Um, well, when you do wash them, I should say. Uh, so yeah, notice you've got your uh, back of the kilt there, inner apron with the Velcro across the top, outer apron, fold it over. Um, they do have options on their website when you order these. All of these are custom made. So there's options for things like uh, there's a patch that you can get sewn on down there or not. Uh, and they give you a couple different options when it comes to uh, belt loops. Uh, you go with the, uh, the wide kilt belt loops. You can go with the narrower jeans belt loop. Uh, normally, they have two on the front and one on the back. The one on the back's for your, your sporin to keep your sporin up. Um, what I do find weird about that configuration, because I haven't seen another com company do that sort of configuration when it comes to um, uh, whatchamacallits, uh, belt loops. Um, I find my sporin sits a little funny. The other casual kilts I have uh, have two loops in the back and that's it and they're they're spaced about about that far apart but you can picture that on the back of me uh, and then of course this kilt and my my goodwill kilt don't have any loops at all for belt or for sporin which i find kind of annoying because the belt shifts around all the time and i'm constantly when I, especially when i sit up or, or go from sitting to standing a fair bit um, it doesn't keep things in place too well um, it would be nice to have something just to keep it down at the back so my belt wasn't constantly popping up. That said, there doesn't seem to be a standard for those, which is kind of weird. You would think there would be a, a standard, and I'm sure uh, Rocky and the guys at USA Kilts have gone with the two-in-one configuration for a variety of reasons. I, I'm not entirely sure what those reasonings are, but I'm sure they're well thought out as most of their design choices and their products are. Uh, highly recommend them if you're looking at uh, cat more casual polyviscose weight kilts. These are 100 bucks US, so about one, 160 ish Canadian uh, with shipping and everything all in, including the conversion rate. It's not bad. Uh, best you're going to find for a, a cheap daily wear kilt. And if you spill coffee on this, you can at least throw it in the machine. And if it gets too heavily damaged or wears out, it's not the end of the world. Whereas if, if you're wearing the more expensive, and this isn't more expensive end, uh, eight yard wool kilts, you're looking at five to $700, uh, depending on where you go for, for a nice kilt. Um, and those you don't want to wear every day. Uh, I'd be worried about spilling coffee or any of the multitude of things that can get spilled on your clothing at any one given point in time. So these, absolutely fantastic. Definitely going to be getting a lot of use out of both of these in addition to the uh, the other kilts that I have. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Have an awesome week.